Hello, how are you doing? It's a strange thing about being a reader that sometimes there might be books that we look forward to so much and then finally get a copy of, we put it on the shelf, and then it just sits there for ages and ages. And I don't know why there are some books like this that never quite make it to the top of my TBR, even though I'm really anticipating them. And one novel that I've been looking forward to since the beginning of the year and that I've had a copy of since the beginning of this year, but which I finally just read and I'm so glad I, I got to it, uh, is This Other Eden by Paul Harding. So I want to talk about why this novel had such personal resonance for me, but also why I think it's a powerful work of art. I grew up in the state of Maine, and it's curious to only discover in reading this novel some real-life uh, historical details about a place in Maine, uh, which I knew nothing about, but I grew up I'm quite close to it, and I just previously had no idea about this tragic story. Um, so in this novel, uh, it's set on Malaga Island, uh, or within the story, um, it's called Apple Island. That's what the residents call it. And at the very beginning of the book, there's a passage from the Maine Coastal Heritage Trust, um, which explains how in the year 1912, 47 residents from this island who were mixed race and who had been living on this island for generations were cruelly evicted from it. The subsequent story fictionalizes an account of these residents through the eviction process and also the, the cold-hearted and bigoted system which expels them from this place. Um, but it is definitely a, a fiction. Um, it's not intending to be a like, non-fiction definitive account of this uh, historical case. Harding presents poetic descriptions of the family's everyday lives and reflections on their history uh, on this island, uh, which they had inhabited, uh, ancestors of theirs had inhabited since the times of the Civil War um, as a haven from the rest of the country. Passages about the residents are juxtaposed with more formal uh, accounts of the process that the government went through and so-called scientists went through uh, to judge and expel these residents without really trying to get to know them or understand them. And it shows why it was such a prejudiced process. And I think it's so artful how Paul Harding you know, situates these accounts with these formal accounts alongside these more poetic descriptions of the individuals and the family's lives. This action is made nominally for the greater good, uh, but it's noted at one point uh, how it's terrible, how terribly good intentions turn out almost every time. So I thought this was a tremendous story about a community of unique individuals who forged their own path, uh, but found themselves subjected to the judgments and the morals that the greater society imposed upon them. And though the island community was viciously mistreated by the state, Harding doesn't idealize their lives uh, or their history because he shows uh, how difficult life was on this island. I mean, any small group of people that try to live in isolated circumstances, especially on a northern, relatively meager island, um, is going to have quite a hard existence uh, with not all that much food or shelter. But there's also no outside help for the residents uh, when they uh, experience illness or abuse from within their own community. And I, I like how Harding basically withholds judgment in presenting these characters and their lives um, so the reader can make up their own mind about this very complex situation. I grew to care deeply uh, about these characters, uh, especially 
Grandmother Esther Honey with her feisty spirit and Zachary Hand to God Proverbs, uh, who is this very old man. Nobody knows how old he is because nobody keeps track of, of age or years on the island. And he practically lives within this big old oak tree and he carves the inside of it with these intricate scenes. Uh, but also Esther's grandson, Ethan, who possesses a natural artistic talent and it's one of the beautiful things about this novel that it highlights how there can be individuals in history that possess really unique abilities and and talents for certain things um, which aren't able to be fully realized because of the circumstances of their lives and the history within that they exist within and I think it's probably why um, the author Essie Adujan um, responded so strongly to this novel because uh, in her excellent adventure novel, Washington Black, I'm also set in history and highlighting an individual whose life, um, who possessed such a great like scientific talent um, and was able to express it partly and practice it um, in his life, but he was limited because he was born into slavery. And of course, there were certain judgments um, about him as he tried to go out into the world and practice in his field. I was also really interested in the character of Matthew Diamond within this novel, who's such a fascinatingly conflicted character uh, because in uh, some ways he really supports the residents of the island. Um, he sets up education for the children there. He he brings charitable donations to the island of, of items that they, they really need desperately. Uh, and he also advocates on behalf of the residents um, when the, the state and larger government um, starts focusing in on the island, um, trying to evaluate them in a very cold hearted way, but he is also an acknowledged racist. So the way that he grapples with his spirituality and his preconceptions through this novel and through his interactions with the residents of this island um, is so compelling. Overall, I just admire so much how Harding's prose flows beautifully in a way which fully embeds me within the sensory experience of being on this island and following these families' interactions with each other and their reflections uh, about their family's past. There's a gentle dignity to the narrative which makes the dictates of the state and the so-called experts seem all the more cruel and hateful. It also makes occasional instances of horrific violence feel breathtakingly shocking and there were so many moments in this novel that I felt completely gripped. Being so isolated, the residents of this island have also developed their own singular culture and way of communicating. The influence of their mixed European and African heritage through songs and stories and practices and legends is so unique. I enjoyed how this was integrated into their daily lives and dialogue. It left me feeling angry not only about the injustice that was carried out, but that something very precious and special has been coldly decimated. So I really appreciated this quietly dramatic story that says so much about family and belonging, spirituality and prejudice. I'm glad I finally got to reading this book, but it's one of the great things about books, isn't it? That we'll get to them when we get to them and they'll just wait on our shelves until we finally read them. I'd love to know if you read this novel as well, uh, what you think about it, uh, or if you're interested in reading it now. Also, are there any books on your shelves which you have been really wanting to read, but for some reason they've just sat on your shelves unread for so long? I would love to hear about that, but I hope you're doing well and reading good things, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.